Now I want to discuss my new column J, which is the after-tax income needs during retirement. Basically what I want in this column is how much they need to, to live at their desired level in cash. So basically um, what I'm saying is if they decide they need a hundred thousand in cash to live the way they'd like to live, then that's what would be going in this column. They would actually have to pull more out out of their 401k plan than a hundred thousand because they whatever they pull from their 401k plan once they hit retirement they're going to owe taxes on that. But this column J does not consider the taxes they're going to have to pay just yet. I do that over in column N. Now note that my columns, this is column J in my new spreadsheet after I've dealt with the employer contributions. It's a slightly different column in my original template. Uh, it must be column H I believe. So yeah, it's my column H, but when I did a previous video I added, a, I spread these out into four columns instead of two columns. So some of you might just be jumping in and watching only this video. And I just want to explain why it's column J and not column H anymore. So the formula that I used, I there's really no um, easy way to shorten this formula so it's going to stay in one column. So first let me explain a couple of things. I'm, I'm using named ranges again over on my uh, inputs. I believe it's there. <laughs> it might be someplace else. Somewhere I told it um, what age I was going to be when I retire, and that might actually be on my dashboard. Alright, I had to pause it for a minute and find where I had the retirement age uh, listed, and it's right here. Um, notice that it is named retire age. So when I refer to that in my formulas, I'm actually referring to cell B6, which is driven by um, this slider, or spinner it's, it's called, on my dashboard. Alright, so my formula says if A14 is blank, put blank, that basically means they are no longer alive. And then it continues on with the nested if, so if B14, which is their current age, is less than or equal to their retire age, then they don't need any after-tax income during retirement because they haven't yet retired. That's what this is saying. So if their current age is less than or equal to their retirement age, put zero. Um, otherwise, keep going. And here's where it's, it gets complicated. Um, what I basically need to do is find their last year's, their last working year's salary because what we're going to do is take that salary and say well multiply that by your standard of living and that's also on the dashboard and I'll I'll pop over to that so the standard of living is set right here and um, experts say that if you want to maintain your standard of living this should be equal to about 80 to 90 percent of your salary so you let the client dictate what standard of living they desire and if they plan to travel a lot or pursue expensive hobbies they might raise the standard of living to 95 or 110 percent even but if they're going to really cut down on their expenses after they've retired you could perhaps lower the sum so what we need to do is find their 
salary for their last working year and multiply it by the standard of living which I have named the range SOL and like even though it says 85 percent on my dashboard in the cell that I stored this in it's actually 85 so I have to convert it to a percentage by dividing by 100 inflation which I mentioned in the other video but maybe you didn't watch it inflation is on my inputs tab it is listed right here and again even though it is um, I keep doing that and I wish I wouldn't forget but um, even though inflation is showing up as 3%, that percent sign is a custom formatting, and inflation is actually built into the cell as just the whole number 3. So to convert it to 3%, I have to divide it by 100. So you'll see me dividing my inflation by 100. And then like I mentioned before, um, and again, you might not have watched those videos, well, you know, I, I'll actually describe that later. So let's keep going with my formula. So if they have not yet retired, they don't need any after-tax income needs that year. It's only after they've retired. So if B14 is greater than the retirement age, I need a number in column J. And also, if J13 is equal to zero, now this is kind of weird. Um, what I really need to do is find the very, f well, what this is telling it, the J13 equal to zero, that is essentially the year before the year I'm on. If J13 is equal to zero and the age in the next row, row 14, is greater than the retirement age, that means my person has just retired. This is the very first year of their retirement. And I'll actually go down to that actual year and show it to you. If they're in their very first year of retirement, I need to look up their salary. And that's what this is doing. So the index function, well first the count if function will count the number of cells that are equal to whatever I told it. I told it to count them if they're greater than zero. And I told it to count in range E14 through E97. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. That is my salary range starting in E14 and all the way down to E97. I went down to row 97 because I figured that would give me enough rows so that even a very young person would be dead by then. Um, and so rows 14 through 97 should be sufficient to cover a person of any age who's using this spreadsheet. So I'm counting the number of values greater than zero in that pinkish range. That's going to tell me what row the index function should pull a value from. And so it's going to look in cells E14 to E97 again, that's the index function. It's going to look in those pink cells, it's going to count the number of cells that are greater than zero, and that will tell the index function, hey, pull the number that is in this particular row. And I think I will I'll actually press F9 so you can see that work. Here's hoping this works. No, I didn't highlight the right things. First, actually, let me do this count if. So it's going to count the values greater than zero in the pink range, and it came up with 36. So there are 36 numbers in this pink range. And then it said, okay, we're going to find the index of those numbers. So whatever number is in the 36th row is what this highlighted section is going to do. And it's going to go down there and pull $211,039. That happens to be this value, the very last salary. And then it's going to index it for inflation for one year. 
that is what this is doing. I'm just multiplying it by one plus inflation for one year. I want to pull that forward one year because a year has passed and they've now retired. I'm going to just press escape so it gets me back to my formula though. So this is pulling it forward one year dealing with inflation and then I'm multiplying by my standard of living. So basically I've said okay this person did make two hundred eleven thousand dollars and two hundred eleven thousand forty dollars their last year of work pull it forward one year at inflation and then multiply it by their standard of living percentage and that's what this is doing so just for the sake of argument if they could live off two hundred thousand sorry if their salary was two hundred thousand we'd increase that by three percent for inflation multiply that result by eighty five percent their standard of living percentage to come up with how much they need that very first year of retirement and that's where we're getting this one hundred eighty four thousand seven sixty five from now it will do this part only if B14 or their current age is greater than retirement age and the value in the previous after-tax income needs is zero. What that's doing is telling me this is the very first year of their retirement. And I'm actually going to pop here. So this is the very first year of their retirement. So their retire age is greater than, sorry, their current age is greater than retire age. Their retire age is 67. And the value in the previous cell, which is now J48, is equal to zero. That tells me it's their first year of retirement. I actually said that so wrong. I'm so sorry. J40, I'm in row 50. J49 would be equal to zero. So their age is old enough. The cell prior to this one has a zero in it. That means it's the first year. So do all that stuff. Do the count and do the index and multiply it by the standard of living percentage. But with the if statement, it's if this logical test is true, then do this part, else do this part. Well, I've covered everything else except this last bit. So I've covered if they're not retired, if they're dead, if, if it's the first year of their retirement, all that has been covered with the previous things in this formula. So now I just need to deal with the years, the, the second year of their retirement and all the following years of their retirement until they pass away. And what I wanted to do then is take, and I'll go here to show you that because it's the first year this occurs, take the previous year's after-tax retirement needs, which in this case would be 184765 and just increase it by inflation for one year. So multiply by 1 plus the 3%. But remember, mine is 3, so I have to convert it to 3% by dividing by 100. So it's just taking this 184765 increasing it by 3% to get 190308 and this is a nice, nice, robust formula that will always find their last year's year of work's salary, of working sal salary, and increase it by inflation for one year and then adjust for the standard of living.